Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Just recovered after that last movie review, which is The Predator. Definitely the worst movie of the Predator franchise, that's for sure. Yeah, it certainly wasn't worth it. <laughs> but now, I'm finally going to get to review the latest Mission Impossible sequel, Mission Impossible Fallout. Yes, which regarded as one of the greatest action films of all time. In fact, it's actually the best installment of the franchise, which is really cool because Mission Impossible tends to get better and better as the years follow. You know, with Ethan Hunt, uh, with his team, you know, going in disguises with their masks that they created with all their latest technology. Yeah. The IMF, you know, going around going after their next mission to go after the terrorists or bad guys or any other. We get a lot of amazingly great stunts here provided by Tom Cruise of course because he does all of his own stunts. Wonderful cinematography, great acting, direction, uh, musical score, I mean you name it. I mean it just gets better and better as it goes along. And I really love this one too. In fact, maybe this might be uh, my favorite of the series next to uh, Mission Impossible 2 and those protocol come to mind and Mission Impossible 3 as well. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed it. I really love it. And I'm glad to see Tom Cruise is back in his game. Because, you know, last year he had The Mummy, which was a terrible movie. But he regained conscious with um, American Made, and that turned out to be a great film for him. But sadly, I wish he was nominated. He didn't win. But what can we do? Either way, I'm glad this one turned out for the best of him. And he's going to continue to go on, especially with his latest uh, Top Gun sequel. Yeah, I can't wait to see that when that happens. I know that's going to be happening. <laughs> so anyway, let, let's get to the review. It stars Tom Cruise, Henry Cavill. Yes, Henry Cavill has been has been playing Superman and Clark Kent in the late in all the the recent Superman movies. All the recent Superman movies like Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. Even Justice League come to mind. Yeah, I just not a big fan of him, but surprisingly enough, he's actually very good in this one, so I'll give you that. Ben Rames, Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson, Sean Harris, who we last saw him in Rogue Nation as Solomon Lane, the villain. Yeah, which I thought he was okay, but not, not nearly as strong as I thought, but hey, now we know. <laughs> but I think he's okay this time. Um, Angela Bassett, uh, Vanessa Kirby, Michelle Monaghan. Yes, she's back as, um, as Ethan Hunt's um, estranged wife. Right now she works as a doctor. Yeah, Wes Bentley. Who eventually became um, her her second husband? Frederick Schmidt, Alec Baldwin, Lane Yane, and Christoph Joner. And it's written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie. The movie begins after the IMF team had captured Solomon Lane two years ago. The remains of his organization, known as the Syndicate, had form a new terrorist group called the Apostles. Ethan Hunt, who is played by Tom Cruise, is assigned to accept these free stolen plutonium cores in Berlin before the Apostles can sell it to a fundamentalist named John Lark. Anyway, he joins in with Benji Dunn along with Luther Stickhell for the mission, but suddenly failed when Luther is being taken hostage and Ethan chose to save his life, allowing the Apostles to take the plutonium. So the team captured nuclear weapons expert Niles 
the book and learned that he built three portable nuclear weapons for the apostles. Um, after the failure, CIA director Erica Sloan, who's played by Angela Bassett, had suddenly hires a special activities division operative named August Walker, who eventually became the villain, who's played by Henry Cavill, decided to work together with Ethan to attempt to retrieve the plutonium. So they wound up um, skydiving and wound up at Paris, where they had a party going around, where Lark is believed to be um, buying the cores from an arms dealer known as White Widow. So they wound up in the bathroom, they, they tracked the man, but suddenly was killed by when they when another um, agent by the name of Elsa Foss uh, joins in, and he was about to kill Hunt. So, even of course impersonates uh, Lark to warn the White Widow that the assassins are trying to kill her. But Walker suddenly passes Dr. Evidence on Sloan, suggesting that Hunt has always been Lark and man and the man who killed by Elsa was a decoy. So they had to secure the plutonium by having White Widow task Ethan with distracting Lane with an armor convoy by moving from Paris. She's provided uh, one of the plutonium cores as a pavement for this kind of mission. So Ethan and Walker attack the convoy and lead to the police and the White Widow men on the chase across Paris while Benji and Lufer suddenly secured Solomon Lane. But Elsa reappears and attempts to kill Lane to provide her loyalty to MI6. The mission suddenly extracts Lane and became very successful while White Widow instructs the team to deliver the Lane all the way to London. Because they had a safe house over there and that's where IMF Secretary Alan Hunley, who's played by Alec Baldwin, that confronts Ethan about being John Lark and how how this is going to really affect the, the team and how yet alone the entire mission. But Ethan just wants to continue to go on, suddenly tricks Walker and this is where it all leads to. When suddenly Walker takes the the plutonium. He also has a detonator too, and wants up going with Solomon Lane all the way to Kashmir, and that's where they have a camp. Which, believe it or not, um, Ethan's uh, estranged wife, uh, Julia Mead, who's played by Michelle Monaghan, along with Eric, you know, Julia's second husband, you know, played by Wes Bentley are there. So that's where Ethan along with Elsa, Benji, and Lufer had to stop these two from detonating the bomb. And this is what led to uh, a helicopter chase going around. Yeah. So that's what the film's about. And I really love it. Very well done, well made. It just it just really kept my uh, adrenaline pumping right there. Um, of course, uh, it did have a slow pace. I mean, this is actually one of the um, the first sequels that actually have a longer running time. It actually runs over 147 minutes. Nearly uh, 2 hours and 30 minutes right there. Yeah. So yes, it, it slows down the pace. But it does seem to go fast at times, you know, with the chase scene and, and all these others that went into it. So it does get pretty complicated, and, and there are times when it could be it could be a little confusing. But that's okay. That's just the whole point of Mission Impossible, though, is that it takes some time to to uh, slow down the pacing just before we get to the next uh, mission. Um, but nevertheless, um, I love the action scenes, the chase scenes, uh, all the way throughout uh, you know, Paris was very well done. Like, 
you know, just when they knocked out uh, the the Armour uh, police truck, just so they could get uh, Solomon Lane out of there, that that was a plus. I mean, it, it leads to a, a motorcycle chase. You know, after uh, both uh, Ethan and, and Walker got out of there from the armored truck, from the armored truck, and yeah, they they suddenly try to pass through all the the cops out there or chasing them. Yeah, with all all the motorcycles around. So once again, another motorcycle chase all the way through, just so they can get to uh, Benji and and Luther. Because they, they just caught uh, Solomon Lane inside the boat, so then they're trying to find a way to capture him. So that way they're, they're going to be in disguise. And before uh, Elsa, who's, who's on a motorcycle, trying to chase him down uh, to kill Lane. Amazing. Um, also, the, the helicopter scene was uh, very well done, too, where you got Ethan trying to uh, go go after Walker. Yeah, he was taking some time because apparently he was having trouble trying to control the helicopter, trying to go all the way straight to the mountains to chase him around just so he can get that detonator. I mean, it had to take like 15 minutes or so to, to get it. That led to that fight scene between the two. He was trying to capture the detonator too, just when we led to that fight scene in the mountains between him and Walker you know, before the countdown ends so he had to try to find a way to to stop it, it wasn't easy <laughs> it really wasn't there's even a dream sequence at the beginning of the movie where Ethan Hunt was ready to get married to Julia and then suddenly Solomon Lane wants up proposing as a as a priest and this is where he says everything that by the time uh, Julia says I do, that's when the bomb suddenly sets, and yeah, you know, they were blown away. So that that was uh, one of uh, Ethan's uh, nightmare, you know, before he was getting ready for his next mission. Amazing. <laughs> uh, also, uh, keep this in mind. This movie also um, has a uh, has one scene where. Yes, um, as we all know, because this actually did happen, when Tom Cruise was uh, doing that scene where he, has, he had to jump to the next building, um, he actually got shattered. Um, he, he was injured uh, while trying to do that stunt, so he winds up in the hospital after that. So that was the scene that they were trying to, to get right, and <laughs> it wasn't really easy. Um, so I think he had to do a few takes just for that. But either way, um, where he had to jump to another building just so he could chase down the Walker, <laughs> which is really funny too because Benji is just using the the tablet uh, where he sees the map where where we get to see uh, Ethan Hunt uh, chase down Walker because they're both uh, they both have a tracking device on their necks so that way they they could track them. Well, he was already on top of the building so that he can go after Walker and then and then he wants up all the way down to straight into the building where there's a, an elevator and he hangs on to it and and this is where he was about to shoot him and and then he shows a picture of his wife because he was about to go after him. Great cast too. I mean, they were all good. I was even surprised Henry Cavill turned out to be very good in this movie. I mean, it's a sh it's funny considering that I'm not a big fan of him. I mean, he was I was never into him as Superman in in the recent Superman movies. So this was a change of pace here. <laughs> so I thought he really works as a villain. I think he was a lot better than than Sean Harris um, as Solomon Lane. But granted. Solomon Lane didn't turn out so bad after all. <laughs> I mean, he is a bad guy, but I'm just saying that Sean, that uh, at least he's not as exactly as weak as as he was, but but he, he did become more threatening, um, especially uh, during the last scene where 
where Benji and Elsa were about to they're trying to find the track the uh, the bombs uh, which is the plutonium they're trying to find out where it was tracked because there's like only three of them that's all set in so they all had the tracking device they're trying to cut the wires the yeah, same goes with uh, Luther he was trying to cut the wires too and suddenly uh, Julia uh, joins in to, to find a way I mean, it was very difficult and that led to that fight where Solomon suddenly captures Elsa and Benji. Yeah, especially when uh, Benji was going to be hanged, too. Uh, wow. <laughs> so they got Angela Bastard in the film, too. Because um, was, she was the one who was becoming the, the new CIA operative, trying to replace Hunley. And it was played by Alec Baldwin. Basically, we find out what happens to him. Everything that goes. And it was great to see Michelle Monaghan again you know, as uh, Ethan's uh, wife, well, a strange wife, along with Wes Bentley joining in. So, so everything's going swell for them because we all learned that Luther had uh, I tried to keep them safe so that way she doesn't get involved. But apparently, she wanted. She wants to get any involved anyway. <laughs> hey, you know, Ethan's trying to find a way to protect her. Still, um, it's very solid. Uh, it has a great score that's done by Lauren Balf, so it's not done by Michael Giacchino this time. So it still um, echoes the um, the theme song from from the Mission Impossible, and. They did a good job uh, with the cinematography, the, the direction, the acting, the stunts, everything. It, it was amazing. So, I gotta say, this is the best of the series, and I couldn't believe it. So, so I had a fun time. I really made it up for it. <laughs> well, anyway, that's Mission Impossible Fallout, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.